hello students today our lecture is to study gamma function why we are studying gamma function why we are using it and what is the need to learn gamma function actually gamma function is a definite integral a type of definite integral which is commonly used in engineering in order to uh calculate the area or we can say the energy so first we are going to define gamma function the gamma function is defined by a definite integral that is integral from 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power n minus 1 dx which is usually represented as gamma n where this n is greater than 0 This integral, which ranges from 0 to infinity, e power minus x, x to the power n minus 1 dx, is called gamma function. And it is read as gamma n. <laughs> Remember students, everywhere, if here is n, here will be n if here is m here will be m for example if we have gamma m we can write it as integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power m minus 1 into dx similarly for example, if we have gamma 5, then we can write it as integral 0 to infinity e power minus x, x to the power 5 minus 1 dx. So there are different properties of gamma function. The first property is to prove that gamma 1 is equal to 1. So <coughs> by definition of gamma function that is gamma n is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power n minus 1 into dx by substituting n is equal to 1 then this will become gamma 1 is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power 1 minus 1 dx or this implies that gamma 1 is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power 1 minus 1 that will be 0 so there is no need to write x to the power 0 that will be 1 
e power minus x dx then integrating the right hand side of the equation by integrating e power minus x this will be e power minus x upon minus 1 and the limits are from 0 to infinity gamma n is equal to by substituting the limits or we can bring this minus 1 into the numerator this will be minus 1 into substituting the upper limit which is e power minus infinity minus e power minus 0 or this will be equal to gamma n is equal to minus 1 e power minus infinity will be 0 and e power minus 0 will be equal to 1 this means that gamma n is equal to minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 this will be plus 1 which is proved So we have another property, we have to prove that gamma n plus 1 equals to n times gamma n and also we have to prove that this gamma n plus 1 is actually n factorial. So <coughs> let's prove it. So, by definition of gamma function, that is gamma n equals to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x, x to the power n minus 1 dx here n is greater than 0 when n becomes n plus 1 here in the beginning of the lecture I have told you whatever here it is we have to replace that n by that value here if we have 5 then we have to write it 5 if we have m we have to write m so here in the property we have n plus 1 so we have to write here as well as here n plus 1 then gamma n plus 1 is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power n plus 1 minus 1 into dx so here it will be equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power n dx so let this is the first function this is the second function and integrating by parts we have the first function x to the power n into the integral of the second function e power minus x upon minus 1 integral 0 to infinity minus the derivative of the first function n into x to the power n minus 1 into integral of the second function that is
further this will be equal to by applying the limits here in the first part x to the power infinity e to the power infinity so this term goes to zero and similarly if we put uh, the lower limit that is zero it will also leads to zero so this will be zero minus zero plus n we can also bring this Uh, x to the power n minus 1 into the integral that is sorry this one is negative n into integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power n minus 1 into dx upon minus 1 remember we can take this negative uh, one in the denominator out of the integral so this will be equal to this will become positive this is n into integral 0 to infinity e power minus x x to the power n minus 1 dx and you can see that this is actually nothing but this is gamma n so this one is n into gamma n the other part which is gamma n plus 1 equals to n factorial for example if we write gamma 6 so this can be written as gamma 5 plus 1 right also we can write it as according to the property gamma n plus 1 equals to n times gamma n and here let's suppose we have 5 gamma n is equal to 5 so this will be gamma 5 plus 1 equals to 5 gamma 5 so this can be written as 5 times gamma 5 also we can write it as 5 times gamma 4 plus 1 right so according to the property of gamma function we can write it as 5 times 4 gamma 4 and similarly we can write it as 5 multiplied by 4 and gamma 4 can be written as gamma 3 plus 1 so this can be written as 5 times 4 times 3 times gamma 3 thus we can write it as and so on 5 4 3 2 gamma 2 and this will be 5 4 3 2 1 gamma 1 and in the first property which we have proved that gamma 1 is also equal to 1 so this is 5 4 3 2 1 this is actually nothing but actually 5 factorial so in a similar fashion if we have gamma in a similar fashion if we have gamma n plus 1 remember here you can see that we have gamma 6 so we brought 1 by 1 unit less which is 5 gamma 5 so we can write it as n times gamma n clear and also we can write this gamma n as n times n times n minus 1 gamma n minus 1 each time it will be reduced by 1 and in the next step we can write it as n times n minus 1 into n minus 2 
gamma n minus 2. As the process goes on, we will have many steps and at last we will have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so on and at the last we will get 3 2 1 and gamma 1 but you can see that it is actually nothing but it is n vectorial so thank you very much i think this is sufficient for today's lecture inshallah we will do more examples and more properties we will discuss in the next lecture thank you